The first of those areas is worship. That's the first area I'm going to improve in. The second area that you really have to work on, that you really, really have to be concerned with, is knowledge. Is knowledge. And how am I going to grow in my knowledge this year? And by the way, I separate knowledge from worship. I separate the two. Because some people focus so much on knowledge and their worship is terrible. They don't worship. They think their knowledge is compensating them for it. So they're studying lots of tafsir and they know a lot of tajweed, but they don't even pay attention in salat. I mean, what are you doing? What's that knowledge for? Your first, I'm, I'm mentioning these things in priority. First thing was worship. The second thing is knowledge. And I don't mean become a alim and get a degree in sharia. Those of you that want to do that, congratulations. I'm talking to everybody here. Not everybody here is going to be a mufti or a alim or whatever. But you have to be educated Muslims. You have to be, at, at, there needs to be some minimal level of education in your Islam. And my recommendation for you for that is that by the end of the year, the coming year, you've studied at least a couple of things. You've studied the seerah, the life of the Prophet ﷺ, once. And you should do it every year once. And actually you should read a different source on the seerah every year for the next few years. And really study it. So if you take one book of, don't ask me which book you should read on the seerah, read all of them. But take one at a time. Take one and go through it one year. Then go again to the seerah again. Again another year. Then again another year. And you, you know what? Because that is the life of that man sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our vision, is our inspiration. So you have to keep going back to it. That's a part of your education. And it'll give you perspective and it will open doors for, for reflection and contemplation for you, that study of seerah in and of itself. There are wonderful resources on that available, and there, I, I don't think you'll have any trouble finding them, inshaAllah ta'ala. At the same time, you have to make substantial gains. In that same year, you have to make substantial gains in your Qur'an. I'm still in the area of knowledge. First area was worship, second area is knowledge, right? In this knowledge, you have to make some substantial gains in your Qur'an, which Let's just say you decided this year you're gonna to try to memorize, I don't know, Surah Al-Kahf, let's just say. So you set a goal, for this, this year I'm gonna memorize Surah Al-Kahf. That means I'm gonna memorize it, I'm gonna study its tafsir, I'm gonna read it in translation, I'm gonna to try to understand every word in its vocabulary. If there's a lecture series on Surah Al-Kahf, if there's a tafsir available on Surah Al-Kahf, if there's an article and paper on Surah Al-Kahf, I'm going to take it and I'm gonna consume it. This is Surah Al-Kahf year for me. Next year might be Surah Al-Rahman year. The year after that might be Surah Al-Baqarah year. I don't know. Maybe it's a couple of surahs a year. But every year you make a substantial gain in your Qur'an. Tangible. I don't just say I'm going to study the Qur'an. Don't do that. And don't just pick random passages. Take a surah, take a couple of surahs and focus. My biggest criticism of Muslim youth today is we don't have focus. Focus on one thing. Get it right. At least you can look back and say, Alhamdulillah, this year I accomplished one more surah, two more surahs, three more surahs, something. And when you study a surah, you don't just learn its meaning. A student came up and asked me, what's more important you think, understanding the Qur'an or memorizing it? And I said, how do you think that those two things are separate? Why do you think that? You know why we memorize the Qur'an? So we can repeat it over and over again. And when we repeat the ayat over and over again, Allah gives us more room to think and reflect more and more. And you start seeing things when you recite something 10 times that you didn't see when you recited it 9 times. He opens more doors. Wallahi, this is true of the Qur'an. Things go hand in hand. So I talked about seerah, and I talked about Qur'an. And now I'll add one light elective. This is your Islamic semester for the year, for yourself, right? I'll add an elective to this, this semester. And the, the elective is at least three or four du'as. Four du'as, you, you studied them, you memorized them, and they became a part of your day. This is actually combining knowledge. You know, memorizing a few du'as from the Prophet ﷺ that you can make a part of your day. Now you're combining knowledge with practice. You're combining both of those things. Okay? And actually each of these three areas of knowledge that I mentioned, and I didn't mention others, I know there's fiqh, I know there's aqidah, I know there's tafsir, I know there's other areas of knowledge. I, I mentioned these three things on purpose, because these three things will make you a better Muslim immediately. Immediately they start having a practical impact on you. Your salah starts improving, because you're reciting Qur'an that you've understood. You know, 
your love of the Prophet ﷺ is increasing because you're learning about his life every year. So every time you send salawat upon him, it's, it's deeper. That salawat, those salawat are deeper felt. Your knowledge of dua is bringing you closer to Allah because now you know what you're asking him. You know what you're actually asking him. Now, this is knowledge. 